Hello people, in this video we want to look at heart failure. So what is heart failure? The heart cannot pump. Basically the heart is just a pump, right? It only make its job is to pump blood to your body. So uh, it cannot pump, okay? So or it cannot maintain the um, cardiac output, okay? Basically it cannot maintain the demand. So that is heart failure. So it is, there's no proper number to it. It is not giving this much of output or that much of output. Basically, it is how much you need, it is not giving. Okay. The heart failure occurs when the cardiac output fails to meet the demands. Okay. So, uh, basically, what are the causes of heart failure? Why will heart fail, you think? The heart will fail because there is some ventricular dysfunction. That means the ventricle has some problem. Ventricle is the one that is supposed to pump into the iota, right? So, the ventricle is not able to pump. So where is the ventricle here? They have shown the ventricle. See the ventricle is uh, is hypertrophied here they are showing and the ventricular chamber has become so small. So basically it cannot receive blood or pump blood. So uh, this is uh, ventricular, uh, ventricular what are they saying? Ventricular dysfunction, right? So why will this ventricular dysfunction occur? This is the most commonest cause of heart failure. Why this ventricle is not able to pump? Because there is a coronary artery disease. So basically the heart has some blood supply, right? Those arteries are called as coronary arteries. Those arteries, now they have something in them, like a blockage or something. There's some coronary artery disease. So the blood, there is no blood supply enough for the heart. So how will it pump, right? So this is um, uh, the uh, main cause, main cause, the common cause of ventricular dysfunction. Sorry, common cause of heart failure is ventricular dysfunction. There will be a stiff ventricle, coronary artery disease, left ventricular hypertrophy. So all these are very, very, uh, uh, this is the most common. Ventricular dysfunction is the most common cause of heart failure. Okay. So in this, what happens? There will be progressive heart failure. We'll come to this. Then look at this high output failure. That is, there is no problem with the heart. But there is some problem elsewhere. Like arteriovenous shunt. It is not atrial ventricle shunt. It is arteriovenous shunt. That is somewhere else in your body. In your body, somewhere, the artery and veins are shunted. Okay. The artery and veins are shunted. There is shunt between artery and vein. So, there is a lot of shunting. So, what will happen if the shunting like this? How much of the heart pumps, it's not going to be enough, isn't it? So basically, this is uh, another cause of um, uh, heart failure. There is high output failure. There is large arteriovenous shunt or there is excessively high cardiac output due to very, very severe anemia is there. What will the heart do? How much of it pumps? The, uh, there is anemia. You cannot meet the demand. There is no hemoglobin to meet the, uh, carry the oxygen at all. Thyrotoxicosis. This guy is having a lot of workup because of thyroid. So what will happen? How much of our output you give? It's not enough. So there is actually high output, but there is still failure. This is high output failure. Okay. Then high output, but still there is failure. Okay. Then coming to valvular disease. This is the third one we are learning here. Valvular disease is causing heart failure. Obviously, the heart has valves, right? So if there is stenosis of these valves or if there is some regurgitation, what is the heart going to do? Whatever it pumps is going to come back. Regurgitation is happening. Then what it can do, right? So here you can see the heart failure um, the causes they have given here. Mainly coronary artery disease. It can lead to myocardial infarction. If there is myocardial infarction, that means because of inadequate supply to the muscle of the heart, there is ischemia, infarct, necrosis, right? So this is myocardial infarction. This will lead to heart failure. Usually myocardial infarction will lead to sudden heart failure. Okay. Look at this guy. How is it going people? Uh, shall we continue? We are looking at the causes of heart failure. Okay. So then um, uh, ventricular outflow obstruction. There is an obstruction to the ventricular outflow. Look at this one now. Ventricular outflow obstruction. There is an obstruction. There is an aortic stenosis. Then what will happen? How much of the heart pumps? It will not come out. So the, you will think it is actually like a um, uh, problem. The heart is not pumping. But actually it is pumping. But there is stenosis. Right? That's what they are saying here. Pulmonary valve stenosis. Aortic stenosis. Okay? Then coming to ventricular inflow obstruction. If the heart is not even able to receive the blood, like there is a mitral stenosis or a tricuspid stenosis from the atria to ventricle, it's not possible for the blood to come. Why? Because there is stenosis here. There is narrowing here. So the blood cannot reach the ventricle. So that will become an inflow obstruction. Then ventricular volume overload. What will happen here? Ventricular volume overload. 
there is overload to the heart so what will happen in the long term what will happen this one will lead to impaired contractility and worsening of heart failure okay so if you are putting overload on the heart then initially it will try to catch up and pump right but later it will become weak okay then coming to arrhythmia so arrhythmia will what will happen if there is atrial fibrillation if there is tachycardia what will happen there is no uh, in uh, there's no adequate filling of the heart okay so there will be reduced cardiac output back pressure etc now look at this last one here diastolic dysfunction basically this will happen in uh, uh, the heart cannot expand and fill so that is diastolic dysfunction that is the, this is the heart let's say let's draw again this is the heart so basically this diastole refers to ventricular diastole only so this is diastole so only if it expands right only if it expands the blood can come and fill the ventricle right so if there is it's not able to expand at all why how can it expand if there is cardiac tampon or so much pressure on the heart is there then how can it expand if there is restrictive cardiomyopathy it's restricted it's constricted restricted ta cardiac tampon or just imagine this is the heart and around it there is so much of restriction constriction tampon or the heart cannot expand so there will be diastolic dysfunction so this will be again low cardiac output so you will have you will classify it as heart failure right so basically the heart is not able to meet the demand then we'll have to go to the heart and find out if who the problem is is it the heart or around the heart or the uh, or anything inside the heart like the uh, uh, the what is it valves or if there is some arrhythmia that is that heart is beating so fast there is some fibrillation it is not able to relax at all the heart so it cannot fill up or there is some obstruction to the flow from the heart there is obstruction to the inflow to the heart extra etc etc so many things okay in elderly people whenever there is a cardiac failure or heart failure whatever you call it as uh, they they have, uh, again they are blaming coronary artery disease valvular disease diastolic dysfunction will be there in these people mostly diastolic dysfunction just now you saw right right constrictive restrictive tamponade etc okay so this is all about heart failure causes so guys you have understood the causes of heart failure so heart failure or cardiac failure or congestive cardiac failure you have understood the uh, causes right so there can be acute heart failure chronic heart failure or there can be an acute on a chronic heart failure correct so look at this uh, factors that may precipitate or aggravate heart failure in pre existing heart disease so this guy has pre existing heart disease what are the factors that can aggravate or precipitate it myocardial ischemia infarction sudden he has some infection arrhythmias right imagine arrhythmias on a heart which is weak right there's a diseased heart then there is inappropriate inappropriate reduction of therapy he is taking some treatment for the heart disease and suddenly he stops right inappropriate reduction uh, there is beta blocker administration of a drug with negative inotropic uh, like beta blocker if they are giving or fluid retention if fluid retention is there what will happen guys if fluid retention is there what will happen overload of heart right so the heart will get overloaded so if then what will happen he already has a heart disease now you are giving fluid overload now he'll have an acute on chronic okay so uh, then uh, if there is pregnancy then you can add on to the existing heart disease if there is tyrotoxicosis anemia um, so these conditions require more demand right demand is more these conditions demand more so the heart has to pump more fluid overload you yourself went and gave the patient intravenous fluid overload in heart failure imagine how will that heart pump so all this are some extra causes we told you now right so some more causes you have understood why this um, sudden um, uh, or there can be aggravation of heart failure okay here we told you one thing like progressive heart failure please understand this term also progressive heart failure means what basically uh, whenever the ventricle is not able to pump right a ventricle is not able to pump what will happen there will be less cardiac output so there is activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and the sympathetic nervous system what these two will do they will increase the preload and afterload on the heart okay so this becomes a vicious cycle and this will progress to heart failure it is trying to say heart come on pump 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 and it will increase the afterload preload and it will lead to progressive heart failure okay so this is another terminology that you should know see here they are explaining that vicious cycle okay where will we start we'll start here see there's heart failure reduced cardiac output so now what will happen there will be neurohumoral activation of the sympathetic nervous system and the renin angiotensin system so there will be vasopressin uh, so vasoconstriction will happen endothelium sodium water retention so vo vo volume overload is happening volume is increasing here sodium water retention then uh, there is vasoconstriction if there is vasoconstriction what will happen 
increased after load the uh, heart will have to pump with more uh, pressure so uh, increased after load so the there is increased blood pressure cardiac work has increased then there is uh, increased blood volume means what even uh, preload has increased the blood uh, in the heart before it uh, goes into systole that also increases so there is increased preload and increased after load so what will happen again how much the heart can do the myocytes are at loss there is myocardial fibrosis it is not able to pump again there is reduced cardiac output again it triggers this renin angiotensin system shoop, shoop, shoop cycle okay progressive heart failure so in this video what are we looking at causes of heart failure right so what you should also explain is this frank sterling curve okay very important this is a very simple curve okay just draw like this see you draw off like this and it is frank sterling curve and you will get marks so nice marks you will get just right like this and you will get fra right frank sterling curve and you will get marks very important concept though <clears throat> so basically what they are telling is uh, in diastolic volume so in diastolic volume means what and that is increasing here okay in diastolic volume is increasing okay so um, this is the heart and here is the ventricle and it's diastole that means it has relaxed what will happen when it relaxes there's a lot of blood that accumulates here so the volume is more if the volume is more means what the length of the muscle fiber is more okay the ventricle has stretched kind of thing you can say the initial length of the muscle fiber is more okay it has stretched you can say to accommodate all this blood now what will happen it will contract with lot of force so imagine a rubber band like this you have, you have pulled it more okay you pull it more and you leave it it will contract with more force but if you uh, pull this rubber band less okay this rubber band you are pulling less and leaving it will contract with less force so it's more like a rubber band did you understand frank sterling law is nothing but rubber band like rubber band if you have pulled it more it will contract with more force okay force of myocardial contraction so is as the end diastolic volume increases the force of the myocardial contraction increases the force increases force increases if the end diastolic volume is more this is frank sterling law but this is again up to one level only right imagine if i take a rubber band and i pull it so much it will break obviously so frank sterling law will not work beyond one level okay till one level yes frank sterling law works after that it doesn't work so how will this uh, frank sterling why is it so important and how why is it such an important concept is because if you want the heart to contract and give output the diastolic volume should be more so the heart has to fill right heart has to fill more okay so people in this video you have looked at all the causes of heart failure and all the concepts pathogenesis etc you looked at what heart failure is heart cannot pump maintain adequate output to meet the demands so the causes of heart failure ventricular dysfunction most common then you have uh, in that uh, stiff ventricle coronary artery disease left ventricular hypertrophy there is progressive heart failure can happen high output failure means there is high output still there is failure because the person has anemia thyrotoxicosis beriberi arteriovenous shunt etc or there is valvular disease stenosis etc so all this can cause heart failure this is progressive heart disease because of heart failure there is reduced cardiac output stimulation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system uh, and uh, sympathetic nervous system there is vasopressors vasoconstriction endothelial system uh, again problem vasoconstriction there is sodium water retention so they increase the volume of the blood so there is more pressure on the heart to pump there is volume overload of the heart and on this side because there is vasoconstriction the heart has to pump more so it has to put more pressure to pump against this vasoconstriction right so again there is this is this is increased after load so again heart has to pump a lot so this is vicious progressive heart failure okay then you looked at the mechanism of heart failure what are the mechanisms there is reduced ventricular contractility like ventricle is not able to contract myocardial infarction myocarditis this is, can happen in coronary artery disease there is an obstruction to the ventricular outflow or there is an obstruction to the inflow okay uh, like um, here they have written mit mitral stenosis tricuspid stenosis so the blood cannot enter the ventricle if there is no now blood in the ventricle it will not uh, contract with the force you know that according to the star frank sterling law 
then volume overload what will happen there is a volume overload heart has to pump a lot right to to some extent if there is volume overload it will pump right that's what you saw in frank sterling law but beyond that it cannot because the heart itself could be weak okay and then uh, arrhythmias arrhythmias what will happen atrial fibrillation tachycardia so fibrillation basically heart is not having time to relax at all right so obviously there will be inadequate filling of heart and heart uh, output will be less okay then coming here diastolic dysfunction very important that means it is not able to relax so if it is not able to relax it cannot fill up if it cannot fill up how will it pump just now you saw it doesn't fill up the force will be less diastolic dysfunction means there is something in the around the heart which is not allowing it to relax like it is constricted it's restricted there's a cardiac tamponade there's fibrosis left ventricular hypertrophy so basically by by frank sterling law you can understand all this right so about heart failure you have to explain the causes then frank sterling's law you saw that if the uh, end diastolic volume is more that means the length of the muscle fiber will be more it will contract with greater force like a rubber band if you pull more and leave it it will come back with more force right but if you have pulled the rubber band less and you leave it it will come back with less force so that is all about the frank sterling curve but this is to some extent if you put so much pressure on the rubber band finally it will break so frank sterling law does not work if you have stretched it too much right it will not work so this is all about uh, uh, the causes of heart failure we have seen uh, so in uh, old age people again same thing they'll have coronary artery disease valvular heart disease they'll have hypertension they'll have diastolic dysfunction can be there so therefore those people these are the causes of heart failure so we have looked at in this video the car heart failure causes all right so basically one more thing we saw that there is acute chronic and acute on chronic why will there be acute on chronic heart disease that can be because that can be because of some sudden uh, triggers you know for um, uh, the chronic condition to have an acute on chronic did you understand like this guy has heart disease over that he has a myocardial infarction he has some illness he has a arrhythmia he is taking some therapy which is not uh, proper uh beta blocker he's taking some fluid retaining uh, drugs right or like uh, nsaids or uh, glucocorticoids he's taking or he has some pulmonary embolism or the person got pregnant over heart disease thyrotoxicosis anemia where basically the demand of the body will be more and intravenous fluid overload the you yourself gave extra fluid to that guy so what will happen heart failure will get more severe because this guy cannot handle extra volume that you are giving right so basically all these are the causes of heart failure we have looked at in the next video we will look at acute heart failure chronic heart failure the features of all these we will look at the types of heart failure left heart failure right heart failure biventricular that is both we'll look at uh, the complications of heart failure we will look at the investigations you should do for heart failure in this there is some kerby kerby right kerly sorry kerly b lines <clears throat> all this we have to look at then we have to look at the treatment guys treatment how will you treat general measurement is there like diet alcohol smoking exercise vaccination etc how will you manage acute heart disease we'll have to look at this because acute heart failure will have pulmonary edema <clears throat> acute pulmonary edema they can have breathlessness so you have to manage this then how will you manage chronic heart failure there are so many drugs you can give then you can give them a defibrillator right all this you can do for chronic heart failure and then what else this is the dosage of the drugs if you want you can know and for congestive cardiac failure in old age again ac inhibitors and loop diuretics they are talking about so all this we have to still look at in this video we have just started and looked at what heart failure is and why does it happen why does it happen yes bye bye